Oh God Almighty. I was in the middle of filming something else, but I watched the new Sonic the Hedgehog trailer and I cringed. Now, a lot of people already know a list of things that they would rather see and things that they would probably change about it. But I really wanted to delve deep into the design of Sonic and why it really made me uneasy looking at how he looks in the final movie product. So Sonic is a very iconic character in video games. We can go down the list of how many iterations of uh, his design was changed over the years. Sonic Mania, one of the newer games, kind of plays into the fact that Sonic's design has, hasn't really changed, I, hasn't really uh, settled. It's always been improving and it always changes. And that's good design. There's little things that you can always improve to fit the new tech, to uh, fit new storylines, etc. So, given that we have a ton of years of history, it bothers me that the Hollywood designers decided to kind of throw away what made Sonic work, what every designer over decades of uh, changing and improving the design and decide to go with what we have on the right. And it really tells me they're not really respecting the product. Now, I've had my issues with Detective Pikachu as well, but at the very least, the proportions are fairly similar to the real Pokemon. Now, there's things like texturing and lighting and colors that I have a bit of an issue with, with that, but this is literally the amalgamation of everything cancerous about live action adaptations from video games. So without further ado, I'm going to really analyze significant things that really make this design truth be told, just incredibly ugly. So, first of all, we have to note the overall shape, right? So, the overall shape, you see that the design, the head is huge. And then you have the body, which, uh, let's, let's do it with this. So, the head is this long, the body is this, and the legs are very long. So right off the bat, you'll notice that this is a very deliberate design because Sonic, of course, runs very quickly. And one thing that a lot of designers like to do is, of course, make long legs in proportion to the body in order to create the sense that, uh, the, of course, when you have long legs, it implies that you can run faster, every stride is bigger. Now, we can take this scale, I'm going to take this and bring it over here. So, immediately, one of the great things that make Sonic look good is being changed is the fact that now our legs seem to be shorter. This is weird. The torso is just off to me. So you see how the head as well, the head here, this becomes one here, two and three. So you see right off the bat from the big proportions of the character they're being changed and it just doesn't work again there are many years of history 
in creating a design this iconic. There's a reason why Sonic has lived for this long. A lot of people resonate with this design. And of course, it only got better and better. And of course, things like cartoony head, um, look at the eye expression, the, the expression as well. Everything just isn't translating. I'll talk about that in a little bit as well. But when we look at the big picture, it just doesn't work. It's just not designed that you want to translate with. Anyways, I don't want to harp on too long about that. I want to talk about the second thing that really bothers me. And it's the limbs. And the hands as well, I guess. So, in cartooning, generally speaking, we big hands, big feet type of thing. It's very appealing because it creates a really strong silhouette. You see how this creates a really big base. Again, it creates the sense that Sonic is very bottom heavy and makes implies that he can run really quickly. It's something that immediately from shape language you would understand about his character. So we notice from on the movie side of things, let's delete. Uh, let's delete these. These are very humanoid uh, proportions uh, when it comes to the limbs as well. So you notice how, so one, actually I'm going to state it right now before I forget. One really big thing is the fact that Sonic, uh, Sonic's legs are actually fanning outwards as it goes down whereas with Sonic on the movie side now the articulation of the legs and such it's kind of weird very it, it's human muscles and such but still you see it might be a smaller chain it might be a very small thing but it actually bothers me and a big reason why is, of course, it kills the sense of the strong bottom triangle on the cartoon Sonic. Whereas this one, it just feels, it's just missing, it's generic. This is just having, this, so in animation school, the first few classes I learned about when it comes to creating anthropomorphic characters, you do not want to just draw a human being and stick a weird head on top of it. In this case, the body is very humanoid. You could cover the head of Sonic and you would immediately think it might just be a, be a human being in a, a fur suit of some kind. This is really bad design because it's not spreading the cartoonish side of the head throughout the entire body. And I've talked about on this channel on other videos that there is a bar where you have cartoons and you have realism. A great design will be consistent no matter where you design it. And, but in this case, the head for Sonic is, oh, let's use a different color here, is around very cartoonish. Now, not as cartoon as the uh, as Sonic of video games, but still. So the head is very cartoony, but the body is very realistic. So you have a clash of design, and it really doesn't look good undo all of this stuff so the limbs is kind of a casualty to it the pipe limbs of Sonic on the left side is very consistent with the cartoonish side of the head and how but you look at the other side it's just a normal human anatomy type of body now the hands as well the hands are very realistic in proportions whereas these were very cartoony 
very expressive. <clears throat> and that's something that Sonic on the right side doesn't really have. So here, very realistic limbs, but the head is still very cartoonish. So I wanted to end off with two things as well. One is the hair and one is the head in general. Now, I want to really talk about where how like well we know that Sonic is a hedgehog. So the best way to really understand it is if we really understand where the design elements of Sonic comes from and that's from a real hedgehog. So we know that the hedgehog has these spikes here. So obviously when it comes to translating for cartoons, this would be a nightmare to animate, having so many uh, spiky hairs going on around. So what the designers did was brilliant. They just simplified it into three prominent shapes, creates a nice silhouette, historical, iconic design. But when it comes to the Sonic of the film, what really bothers me is, in general, how they executed the spikes. Because it's kind of like, these are kind of individual spikes. And the fact that it's a very smooth texture, kind of, it, it gives a certain flow. It's so hard to explain, a gesture, a flow to the design. Whereas... The one on the right side. So not only is the spike there, but then there's little things sticking out as well. And it creates a really weird look to his character. Now, it's so hard to explain. I'm sure you realize something is wrong, but like I'll probably have to sit down longer and think about the words to describe it. It just looks really awkward to me. And... I want to finish off with the worst, worst part about it, and it's really the facial expressions. And it's just, oh my goodness, what are they thinking? So we look at the cartoon, the video game Sonic. You see there's a really nice curvature with his eyes. And... In this case, they just decided to stick generic eyes on Sonic here. It completely kills the look of the video game version. Again, every design, especially when it comes to cartoony stuff, has a purpose. The way the shapes are broken down, so even when we look at the mouth here, look what we have here. Does it really look like the same design? Is it really Sonic anymore? And that's really the thing you have to ask everyone about. And what I want people to really understand when they're watching this video. Are we really seeing the same design? Are we seeing the same character? Or is it just a really bad character design that's just coincidentally named Sonic? In my humble opinion, I don't think this is the same character. This is literally breaking everything that makes the character look strong, makes make the character that has been with us for decades and really kind of ignores all the design elements that made it work. It's just weird. Like, why would they ever do this? I want to end off this video with one more point. Now, defenders of this sort of thing would say well, translating a cartoon character directly to live action would never kind of work because 
they're in different realms, of course. There's standards of realism and to think about, whereas cartoons will probably change the surroundings as well. And that's a completely good point. Um, this is something that we're taught as well. But part of me says that, it's part of me really think is really thinking about that. And it really makes me question, is it even necessary to bring franchises like Sonic and Pokemon to the live action realm? If we know for a fact that it would be nigh impossible to retain what made the designs good. Something to really think about, right? Just It just really bums me out, honestly. I've been a fan of Sonic for my entire life, basically. And seeing this type of thing really doesn't make me happy. And it really turns what used to be my childhood into kind of a laughing stock. Now, that's not to say the new Sonic games are good. Well, the Sonic Mania was pretty good, but there, there are a lot of um, weaker entries of the franchise. But this is the next level of just embarrassing piece of garbage. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.